in the last few years. And despite some variability in the results, concerning, depending on species or experimental conditions, the majority of studies show that there's a great, uh, a big impact of uh, ocean acidification on coral calcification. If you look more particularly at uh, early calcifying stages of, co of corals, it has been shown that um, w that uh, ocean acidification can suppress uh, the metamorphosis, can affect primarily polyp growth, but also can affect the size, the shape, and the composition of uh, crystal skeletons. But the mechanism by which ocean acidification will affect coral calcification remain unknown. And this is partly due to the fact that the uh, bases of coral calcification are completely unknown. So I ask the question today, how does ocean acidification affect gene expression in corals? Uh, the gene expression, looking at the gene expression is a good way to uh, get insight into the mechanism driving uh, driving a decrease in coral calcification because it's changing in, in gene expression is the best way, is a quicker way for an organism to uh, respond to an environmental stress. So to tackle this question, we've chosen um, primary polyps of uh, Acropora millipora, as you can see here, for several reasons. The first reason is that they are still without the oxantelae. So we have, uh, we simplify the, <coughs> the problem for the data analysis mainly. The second reason is uh, those guys just started to calcify. This is a critical transition, transition in life history of corals. And it has been suggested that uh, those life stages are more susceptible to environmental perturbations. But the main reason, uh, as mentioned by David and uh, Sylvain, is that now we have the transcriptome and genome databases, and this open a uh, big door for several molecular approaches, such as uh, large-scale gene expression analysis, like this one. So we exposed primary polyps of uh, Acropora millipora to different um, condition of elevated CO2, a control condition, and 750 and 1,000 uh, ppm of CO2, which corresponds to the medium and the high um, scenario predicted by, by the um, intergovernmental panel of climate change. We had three biological replicates for each uh, condition, and we export them for a short-term stress experiment of three days. After three days, we sampled those uh, individuals, we extracted the genomic material and we subjected them to uh, high throughput sequencing and more particularly the Illumina technique that uh, Sylvain described. We have to run two main approaches uh, for the analysis of those data. A first one that is more a global analy analysis based on gene ontology, so mainly based on comparison with what, with what we know in um, databases of other model organisms. But this um, is mainly focused on well-described and highly conserved processes in model organisms. And unfortunately, the calcification process in cores is uh, not known and not annotated. So we had to do in parallel a targeted approach to focus on genes involved in uh, biomineralization in corals. So first of all, the gene ontology. So basically what we've done is that we had a set of genes differentially expressed between the control condition and the stress conditions. We annotated the genes, those genes based on uh, available databases. So we assigned them kind of a function, to be simple. And we looked in this set of that differentially expressed genes which categories were most, um, mostly enriched. So in other words, uh, this allows us to determine which pathways are more affected by the stress. We found two main categories. The first one is extracellular matrix. And all the genes in this category were upregulated in response to the stress. So in corals, we can distinguish uh, two extracellular matrices. One which is called the extracellular organic matrix, and it, which is mainly involved in the cell-cell interaction and the cell-substrate interaction. And another one, which is called the skeletal organic matrix, 
and it's basically the proteins that will be incorporated into the skeleton and that will form the backbone for the, the calcium carbonate skeleton. If we look in detail um, at those genes that belong to this category of extracellular matrix, we cannot really tell if they belong to this extracellular organic matrix or the skeletal organic matrix. We will need to localize those genes um, in situ to determine to which category they belong. Another hypothesis would be that these proteins could have a role in the mucus prediction. As you know, uh, in response to an acute stress, the coral will produce mucus in order to isolate uh, his tissue to the external medium. The second category um, is mitochondrion. So we found many genes involved in the mitochondrial um, machinery, which is responsible for energy synthesis, that were downregulated in this study. So this metabolic suppression in response to high CO2 suggests that there's probably a reallocation of energy to more immediate stress response needs, such as, for example, mucus production, as I said before, but also maybe pH homeostasis and immune, immune defense. Before I move on to the focus on calcification genes, I would like just to remind you what we know about the calcification process in corals. Um, so you can see here a primary polyp and the skeleton. This is a transversal section of the primary polyp, and if you cut at this section, um, you can see the two different uh, tissue layers. So to calcify, the coral will need three main components. The first component will be um, ion transporters, because it will need to, trans to transport from the external medium to the site of calcification um, ions, mainly calcium, carbon, and also remove the protons from the site of calcification. And for this, um, it's likely that ion transporters are involved in the calcification process. The second component is a control of carbonate chemistry. And this is mainly done by a um, particular enzyme called carbonic anhydrases. Those enzymes have uh, many roles. One of them is well known, and it's an involvement in calcification of many calcifying organisms. What has been shown in cores is that those carbonic anhydrases could uh, supply the carbon for the calcification. And then the third component uh, is the secretion of the skeletal organic matrix, as I, as I mentioned before. In cores, we don't know a lot of things about uh, the proteins involved in the skeletal organic matrix. One has been fully described to date, it's the galaxin, and the other ones are uh, mainly putative proteins involved in calcification based on their amino acid composition and also on their expression pattern, as you can see on this one, for example. In purple is where the gene is preferentially expressed, and as you can see, it's expressed around, along the septa of this primary polyp. So basically what we've done is that uh, we screened the transcript transcriptome database of Acropria millipora, and we looked for all the uh, genes that could belong to one of those categories, and we looked at their gene expression in response to uh, ocean acidification. On this figure, uh, this figure has two main parts. The upper part uh, represents the percentage of genes that are either non-regulated in blue, up-regulated in green, or down-regulated in red. So the percentage of genes uh, that are that regulated in each of those categories. On this bottom part, uh, you have for each category the full change expression, which means uh, how much they are overexpressed or done or downregulated in response to the stress. So for the first category of ion transporters, what we show in this study is that um, they are not significantly enriched in differentially expressed genes. Most of them are non-regulated in response to stress, at least at the transcriptomic level. It would be interesting to look at uh, other levels of regulation, like protein regulation. It would be also interesting to look at those uh, few genes 
that responds, do respond to uh, ocean acidification. But this was uh, particularly surprising because we were kind of expecting a change in those transporters. The second category um, is a carbonic anhydrases. We found uh, 15 isoforms of this enzyme in the transcriptome database of Acropora millipora. And interestingly, half of those isoforms were, were downregulated in response to ocean acidification, in response to the higher stress uh, applied to, to the corals. So it's a little bit hard to explain. So what does that mean? Um, as I told you, uh, the carbonic anhydrases have multiple roles. One of them is a role in biomineralization, but another one in corals, for example, is a, is a role in symbiosis. It has also a role in pH homeostasis, pH regulation. So we can Im imagine that this downregulation, oops, sorry, this downregulation of those carbonic anhydrases, isoforms, would help in maintaining um, a, a right pH at the calcification site, for example. And to finish, the last category uh, of the skeletal organic matrix proteins. I won't go into details about all those different categories, but just a general overview. You can see that they are highly disturbed in response to the to ocean acidification compared to the other categories of genes. So uh, three informations here. The first one, they are uh, highly uh, disturbed, but half of the sequences are upregulated, half of the sequences are downregulated. So it's a little bit hard to interpret the data here. What we can say is that maybe this could explain the disorganization of the size the, and the morphology of the crystals in the skeleton that uh, we can observe. Another explanation is um, we don't exactly know uh, the, the exact role of those different um, proteins of the organic matrix, pro of the organic matrix, skeletal organic matrix, sorry. But it's likely that each of those categories have a specific role um, in the calcification process. Some of them could, uh, be in, could inhibit the calcification process and some others could just increase the calcification process. And altogether they are just um, elaborating the architect architecture of the coral skeleton. So to summarize, this short-term stress experiment on primary polyps of Acropora millipora induces, first of all, a metabolic suppression, which suggests a reallocation of energy to uh, more immediate stress response needs, such as mucus production, pH homeostasis, and immune defense. And this is quite in accordance with uh, results that, we shown, that Malcolm shown yesterday, that um, the core is able to regulate its pH homeostasis, and this is maybe one of the reallocation uh, processes. Second, um, the ion transporters were not affected, at least at the transcriptomic level in this study. So we ask, we ask the question, is there a post-translational regulation? Or maybe the reallocation of energy that we observe could um, be uh, towards these ion transporters. Uh, we found that uh, the carbonic anhydrases are largely affected, so one of the hypotheses to explain that is that maybe this could help in maintaining the appropriate pH for calcification. And finally, we observed a complex response of skeletal organic matrix proteins, which suggests that each of those different proteins have a specific role in the calcification process. And we still have a lot of things to do to better understand the calcification process. So I would like to emphasize here that I started two years ago with one question, one question and I finish here with six more questions. So it's maybe the good thing of transcriptomic studies, I don't know, or it's maybe just science. <laughs> but um, we focused this study on a really simple um, setup, which was short-term aposymbiotic juveniles and only PCO2 stress. But the sensible next step would be to look at long-term experiments, maybe look at symbiotic adults and see how the symbiosis can interfere with this response. And of course, uh, look at the combined effect of uh, PCO2, and PCO2 and temperature. But I hope that I convince you here that even with this simple approach, um, 
this is a first demonstration of uh, what we can do with those uh, sequences database. We demonstrated, we, we can demonstrate which processes are the most sensitive to ocean acidification and something that I didn't emphasize in my talk, but uh, with this approach, we significantly increased the set of candidate genes for a role in calcification because we definitely don't know a lot of things about the coral calcification. And those uh, sequences databases and all the molecular approaches available now paves the way for an important phase in coral bi biology in the next future, I think. So thank you for your attention. Um, since I'm leaving, this is a special acknowledgement to all the people that I met here and that made this project possible. So yeah, thanks to all of you, it's been a great adventure. Okay.